And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. We begin today's show with breaking news in Texas, where an unknown number of people are dead and well over 100 injured after a massive explosion at a fertilizer plant near the town of Waco. Uh, the incident began with a smaller fire that ignited chemical tanks, causing an explosion that shot flames high into the air. A police official estimated 5 to 15 people have died, but the casualty count is expected to rise as day breaks. Some of the victims are first responders who reacted to the initial blaze. Dr. George Smith, medical director of West EMS, said 60 or 70 people may have perished. There was just a major, major explosion. The windows came in on me, the roof came in on me, the ceiling came in. I worked my way out to, to go get some more help. Uh, of course, we lost all communication because the power went out. Toxic fumes rising from the rubble of the plant raised major health concerns. Half the town was evacuated, buildings were gutted, dozens of homes were damaged, and several residents of a nearby nursing home were reportedly missing. D.O. Wilson, a state trooper with the Texas Department of Public Safety, compared the destruction to war. I can tell you, I was there. I walked through the blast area. I searched some houses earlier tonight. Massive, just like Iraq, just like the Murray building in Oklahoma City. Same kind of anhydrous exploded, so you can imagine what kind of damage we're looking at there. I know there was at least 75 to 50, 50 to 75 houses damaged. There's an apartment complex that has about 50 units in it that was completely just skeleton standing up. There's a nursing home in the area that 133 people in the nursing home. We've got them evacuated. I don't know what their injuries are, are there right now, but all injuries have been removed from the scene and taken to local hospitals in the Waco area. For more on this developing story, we go to the nearby town of Waco, Texas, where we're joined from the studios of news station KWTX by Jack Hicks, the station's new media director. Uh, we're also joined by Mike Elk, a labor reporter for In These Times magazine, is reporting on the explosion in West Texas since it happened last night. Let's go to Jay Hicks first in Waco. Uh, describe what you understand has happened until this point, Jay. What I've understood is around 7.50, um, calls went out, uh, emergency calls on the scanners, um, completely lit up. And after that point, it's been complete chaos. Um, we know that there was an explosion. We know that it spread to uh, the local uh, nursing home as well as the intermediate school uh, that's very close by. Um, and from there, they evacuated many of the senior citizens in the nursing home. And fortunately, there wasn't anyone, uh, according to the West superintendent, that were in the school. There weren't any students and there weren't any custodial staff. Um, and after that, it's really been a search and rescue. It's been about finding people, figuring out uh, which hospital to take them to, and really just the organization is trying to figure out uh, some of the folks that are missing. Um, we know that uh, there have been confirmed deaths, uh, six of uh, firefighters, uh, one police officer, and the city manager is also um, uh, missing in action right now. Uh, Jay, Hicks, uh, Jay Hicks, is there any indication of what was occurring at the plant before first the fire broke out and then the uh, and then the explosion? Or was the plant involved in any kind of of uh, uh, special maintenance or other work that might have triggered the fire? It's not known. We really haven't been able to come in contact with anyone. I spoke to the niece of uh, the, the gentleman who owns the facility. Um, she was unable to get in touch with anyone in her family. Um, so we really don't have any insights into what was going on in the facility. Um, the only thing we do know is obviously we've checked the records and we know that in 2006 the, the plant was, um, was cited uh, by the state regulatory agency um, for um, not having a safety plan. So uh, beyond that, we really don't have much look inside into what was going on inside the, the factory prior to the explosion. And Jay, the Dallas Morning News is reporting documents show that the fertilizer plant that exploded uh, in West Texas reported to the EPA and local public safety officials that it presented no risk of fire or explosion. 
Well, you're right. We know that that was filed. And, and obviously, we know that uh, right now the city um, of West, in terms of facts that we know, have been absolutely uh, devastated. Um, as the reports that you've uh, received and heard, and, and um, again, the, the words and descriptions are a war zone. Um, you know, many of the homes, uh, the, the brick looks like uh, it's actually been almost blasted off of the homes nearby. Um, and so, uh, we know that those claims were filed, but we also know that there's been uh, a very tragic explosion that has probably changed West uh, in a way that uh, it'll be forever changed. Uh, and as and as daylight now uh, has uh, has come to uh, West and to the Waco area, uh, what's go what's going on right there now? Are the are there still the bodies are still there of those who have, have died, and and is the area still completely cordoned off? Well. The area is actually, they've spread out the area in terms of where they will allow media. Uh, the conditions have actually turned really, um, it, you know, made it more difficult for search and rescue. Uh, you probably can't hear, but at the station uh, where I'm located, there's actually the pounding of rain on the roof. It, it, you know, the visibility is really low right now. You can probably only see maybe several hundred feet. The temperature dropped uh, in the last couple of hours, and there's also a wind that's coming through. So, you know, not exactly ideal, you know, uh, conditions that they're dealing with. Um, I think it's going to be a struggle this morning um, to get out there with the rain, the wind, and the cold weather. I know that the uh, that the uh, uh, officials here would do the best job, but but they definitely have their work cut out because the conditions, uh, as I said, the rain is 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 pouring right now. Um, Jay Hicks, can you describe the area uh, where you live, Waco, and nearby and west? I mean, this is an enormous facility. Clearly, um, uh, the toxic anhydrous ammonia, um, tens of thousands of pounds of it. Has it been a concern? And can you talk about who you believe is lost at this point, like the firefighters, the city manager? Well, right. We know those. Those are confirmed lost, uh, except for the city manager. Um, in terms of the facility, you know, West is a smaller town, as you've, as, as everyone has been learning about West, 2,600 or so people, um, really a, a town that uh, known around the world uh, for great football, you know, kind of Friday night under the Texas lights, many people in that town come out for the, high, the West High School uh, football team, which is actually a smaller school, but has a very strong tradition of, of having some competitive teams. Um, in terms of who lives there, a lot of the people, it's a 15 minutes outside of Waco, which is Waco's around 200,000 people. It's a smaller town. So some people um, work in and around Waco. So it's kind of a stretched out, maybe bed, bedroom community, uh, a little bit of a rural community, a tight knit community. Um, so I think this uh, will definitely be a sledgehammer uh, to the city. Uh, what's been the response of Governor uh, Perry at all? Has he made statements or come to the scene? He has made uh, statements. He made some of the last statement that I saw on Twitter was around 9 p.m. yesterday. Um, he said that he was uh, sending all state resources uh, to support the efforts uh, and, and, and uh, said he was praying for the people of, uh, of West. And uh, that's what we've heard thus far. Um, we've just been joined on the telephone by Tony Dudick, who is a local farmer um, at the scene last night uh, helping victims. Tony, can you describe what you saw last night? <clears throat> it was. It was. I was not at the blast scene. Let me. Let me. Let me clarify that. I, from where I was at, was a good. I was a good three miles uh, at the West Community Center. The, the the fertilizer plant, West Fertilizer, is kind of on the north side of town. I was on the extreme southern side of town. So there was a pretty good size of territory between where I was. But I was at, at one of the triage stage, staging points. I, uh, I I left my home about 10 minutes from, from West and uh, I told my wife, I said, I've got to go. Uh, I used to be a, a volunteer fireman years ago, and they were asking for help. Uh, I got there to the triage center and immediately started uh, assisting with triage with uh, uh, many of the nursing home residents, and there's also assisted living uh, um, housing right near there. Uh, 
it was it was um I described it last night as something that you would have seen at the Murrah building um, in 1995. I remember that explosion very well. In Oklahoma uh, City. It was, it was, it was, it was just, uh, it, it was, it was devastation beyond beyond description. There are not words in the English language to describe. And, and now that it's getting daylight, uh, there's not words to describe the devastation we're going to see from the air. And that was a fertilizer bomb at, in Oklahoma City. This, it was. This it month, was. it was exactly this um, w this week in uh, 1995, April 19th. Let, let's, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say this before you, you don't, I don't, want to, I don't want folks to get too far ahead in, the, in their thinking. Um, we knew that was a bomb in, in Oklahoma City. There are all the right components for a bomb can be found right, or could have been found right there at West Fertilizer. Anhydrous ammonia, those those chemicals can be terribly unstable uh, if the conditions are are right. I've seen not anything of this magnitude. I've seen grain elevators explode with with a lot of destruction. I mean, it's, it's like a bomb going off. But but let's let's don't get let's don't say this is an act of terror or anything. I think it's just a. a oh no, a we were in no way in no way were we suggesting that. Just yeah. the point was that it, that shows the power of when fertilizer blows up. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. And, 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 and Tony, uh, Tony Dudek, I'd like to ask you, do you, uh, from where you were, could you tell the, how long was the period between the actual, the fire breaking out and the firefighters responding and the actual explosion? That, that I, I do not know. I did, I spoke with a, a colleague that I teach with uh, shortly before I went up there, and, and he was at a meeting in West, not too far from, from where West Fertilizer is. I'd say, uh, by air, it's, it was less than, than, uh, three quarters of a mile north of, of where West Fertilizer is. Um, he said there were people coming out there to the, to the, um, the, the meeting. He said they saw smoke. Before the explosion, somebody just thought, oh, well, there's somebody's house, you know, or somebody's burning some, some brush or, or trash, and nobody really thought about it. They, they heard the sirens, and they knew, uh, they knew that, that uh, the West Fire Department was responding. And then just a very, very short period of time, probably less than 15 minutes uh, is what he said, they, they heard the explosion. Now, he was, he was a, a, nearly a mile away. Uh, in a steel building, a large, big steel uh, uh, building, he said it, it knocked the, uh, the the concussive force was so strong. Uh, it it knocked uh, 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 light bulbs out of fixtures, uh, insulation out of the the, the hanging ceiling. Uh, he said he literally felt the ground shook. My father and my cousin were eight miles away at our farm. Uh, west of there, and and my dad described it as as feeling like an earthquake. Now that's eight miles eight miles away from there. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard hitting, in depth reporting.